Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we've got something new from WPL. Alright, let's get this bad boy open and let's annoy Liam from Fires RC. Alright, cut towards myself as per usual. Alright, now typical from WPL, uh, World War II grade cardboard box. I wonder if it's tightly sealed like usual. So, yeah, pretty much a vacuum seal to get the box out. So, bye bye, World War II grade box. So it's finally here. This was originally teased on the E1 box art when it was released. A tracked on trailer unit to tow it. So what we've got is a brand new trailer and a brand new hitching system. But then we've got the original standard B36 Euro, which originally came with the com box. So I say enough talking, get this box open. I don't know why I just cut both ends open, but Let's get this end open. Right. So, so you get your usual bag of goodies and parts, instruction manual. Time to get this plastic off. There is tape. Yeah. Oh, and the controllers. So, standard looking, I think it's the Res V3 looking controller because you've got the winch in and out switch on there but apparently this has got a special little feature which works with the e1 sadly it will not work with my e1 because i've got a prototype board in it and i'm not allowed to discuss what that prototype board is so trailer appears to come in two parts so we've got the rear Ooh, that's, that's surprisingly got quite a bit of a flex in that. So these wheels are similar to the D12 wheels where it's just a rubber coating around a hard plastic wheel. And another little thing I've noticed there is a, uh, I think this is the mechanism for lifting the tailgate. There is a push rod arm on the bottom. And there is also two wires here. So here's the other half of it. So a little bit of assembly required considering the size of it. If not, the box was going to be too big and it was going to cost more on international shipping. So I will assemble that in a minute. Let's move this to one side and let's get the truck out. So, here it is, the tractor unit. This, again, the front half looks like your standard B36. But moving it around to the rear. So what we've got now is a fifth wheel hitch added onto it with a releasing mechanism. Spring loaded, which is quite nice. So, another thing you may notice which is similar to the other... B series models is the spare wheel rack. But apart from that, I believe, a slight sneak, sneak peek, underneath this hatch, a few people have already noticed, there is like a uh, turntable. So I wonder, I wonder if this is going to be used for something else. Maybe, maybe considering we've got a hitch on the rear as well maybe a log lorry that would explain why there is rollers on the uh, fifth wheel for the um, u-shape 
But apart from that, that's all new. And underneath, if I flip it over, it's the same same drive line as you normally used to, but we've got the gearbox from the the C54 RTR, I want to say. So it's that weird gearbox where one shaft rotates one way and the other shaft rotates the other way. It should stop and eliminate some torque twist in the axles. So, apart from that, I really don't know what else to say about it. There is holders for lights, which means there may be a new light kit coming for it. Because it looks like these should just you should just separate and you should be able to put some lights in it uh, so i think time lapse mode and i'll get it built Okay, so I've got it fully assembled. I noticed one thing because I actually ended up using the instructions for once, wondering what the hell this is. So this is a servo cable, basically. I was wondering, where does this go? I completely glossed over the fact that there is actually a hole here. So it looks like it plugs in here. So that... So that answers the question, for me, why did there need to be cables running up the inside of the inside of the frame? Well, it plugs in up at the front here. And another thing I found out while messing about is this has actually got a lot more range of motion than just tilt like this. It can actually go side to side as well. I know the truck's rocking side to side motion in it the only thing is these are also the standard RTR hard tires which may be a little bit nicer for pulling heavier loads another thing I've been asked a couple of questions again on Facebook so what is the maximum weight this can hold because some people want to try normal Henlong tanks on it instead of the WPL one. I will test that out in the running video. Oh, another thing I didn't notice is there's a handle of some sort there. Another thing as well, uh, the feet do actually extend. A little bit hard to pull out, but so you've got your leveling feet, so you can well, when you stop, you can hook it up properly. Because currently, as it is, it sits a bit too low. Next question I got asked Will a Tamiya hitch work? They'll lock in. 
and it will hold eh, sort of it will sort of hold but it will let go but there's no there's no way it will hold up and down so it will let go of that WPL hitch on the other hand yes Holds nicely. So, I think I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow for running video because it is peeing it down outside right now and it's getting a little bit too dark to do it. So, yeah, for you, it'll be a couple seconds. For me, it'll be an entire goddamn day. So, here's the running footage.
and we are back so i hope you've enjoyed the running footage now it's time for me to be a little bit nitpicky with it so i absolutely love it i love the concept but there is a few things which i think could be done a bit better or changed so the trailer itself absolutely love it the little nitpicky parts about the trailer that I don't actually like. First of all, the feet. Now you can see what feet. So they came off within maybe five, ten minutes of running it. They were literally the first point of contact for this trailer. So they got torn off. So what I would recommend is possibly offsetting these so they sat a little bit higher so they sat flush with the base of the trailer so the next nick picky part i know it's designed for the e1 but it's also designed so you can haul the other models first bit these guards are to try and stop it from sliding off like I said, I understand it's for other. It can be used for other vehicles as well, but for the E1, the track width ain't the same. So some adjustability in this would be nice. So it can be adjusted out. Third thing, which I'm probably going to fix myself by 3D printing extensions for it, but you cannot fit a six wheel drive on it without one of the wheels interfering with rear wheel on it so maybe factory extensions or if not i'm gonna mess around and 3d model one and put it up on my colt's 3d page apart from that here's that's all the bad bits i hate about it i love the ramps they're quite useful to be be able to be controlled via off the controller instead of manually having to put them down. So my second favourite thing, which I wish WPL will bring out on their normal tyres, is how highly detailed these wheels are, or these tyres are. To the point, which we also found it quite funny, there is date markings, there is like what size the rims are, and so on. And when I say what we find it funny, the um, actual tyre size, according to what the tyres are, is 15-86R10. So apparently that's a 10 inch rim. Yeah, <laughs> that's, why, that's why we found it kind of funny. But we, uh, we love how super scale that is. We just wish the trucks could have the exact same like super scale tyre. The bigger down point is the hauler units itself. I know it's set to be built on a budget. So it's affordable. But when it can barely pull itself up a hill without a load on it. So... Again, like I said, this is designed to haul the E1. When it cannot actually haul the E1 up a slight gradient, that's kind of annoying. Let me run you the comparison clip. So, what I think, I know it has a bigger motor than what the original first generation style one had. They had like a, I want to say 180 motor and this is like a 220 or something like that. I would say this would be the perfect candidate for 
being straight from the factory to speed. I know that will add a little bit more money to it in the overall cost and selling, but I think it would be worth it. And the next thing on that list, again, this is a long run, running gripe. I have now got two of these batteries. So two of them with the newish plug on them. I know I've been told by WPL themselves, this is due to a new Chinese regulation about this connector going from this. So this is one of the E1 batteries. Well, the issue I have is when I was out filming this, I have no clue how fully charged each one of these individual batteries are because my battery tester will not work with these. It will work off a balance port, which is good. But yeah, there's no way to test how, fu how fully charged these are. So I don't know, like I showed you the clip earlier, of it struggling to get up a hill, whether or not that was on a dead battery or not. Which it possibly could have been, possibly not. So apart from that, I probably rate it maybe eight out of 10. I love it, I love the look of it. It just needs some fine tuning. Like I said, maybe, Maybe a bigger motor straight into it, even though it has had a motor upgrade, because it did seem like it would just stall out. But yeah, you know what? To keep the cost of manufacturing down, it's understandable. So I think I may do some upgrades to this in the near future. Possibly two-speed gearbox. So. To answer the question at the beginning of the video, what weight can it pull? It can just about pull its own weight with the trailer and a uh, E1 on the back. I don't think I'm going to bother putting a Henlon tank on the back of it just to prove another point that it, do it can't probably pull it. So, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I know this was kind of a long one, but yeah. <sighs> There was a uh, lot to talk about, so I'll see ya.